What's up, everyone? Clint Esposito here. It is, I don't know what day it is. Well, it's Friday. I don't know the date. I can look on my computer. June 3rd. I got my uh, Danell and Theater 100th anniversary shirt on. You guys like that? Um, so, I'm going to start off plugging that. So, let's go to... Hold on. This other little page. 100th anniversary. This is the Facebook page. We got a lot of events planned this is obviously i'm signed into the page so i should be on this other side over here to block all this stuff instead i'm blocking all the stuff so november 5th this is going to go through events backwards basically what i'm showing you is you can go to the denellen theater facebook page and find out about all the events we have coming up whether it be comedy or music this is maddie smith she's on wild now if you couldn't tell by that november 5th we got the Mountain Jam Band, an Allman Brothers tribute band, October 15th. I, um, Six Seconds to Mars, which is a Motley Crue tribute band on um, uh, October 1st. Hold on. We got a Grateful Dead, Dead Reckoning, Dead Reckoning Grateful Dead tribute band. On uh, September 16th. Oh, and uh, I don't know where that one went. We ha also have, let's get to that event. Um, coming up real soon, we have, let me get to events. Oh, this is what happened. I made the thing too big. Events. Where is the events I'm hosting? There we go. Um, coming up, we have, uh, Aaron Berg. I don't know why I don't see his event on here. Show more. There we go. Aaron Berg, June 16th. That's a Thursday, Thursday, June 16th. You can see Berg at the Danellen Theater. Also, what else was I looking for? Oh, coming up real quick here, we got... Center Stage Live Band Karaoke, Thursday, July 14th, Live Band Karaoke, on a stage, in a friggin' theater. Okay? You know what I mean? And um, you can also, uh, you can either go there, or you can go to our Eventbrite collection. It's a collection of all the events at uh the Nanellan theater we also have uh gerald benford which is july 28th august 18th we have chip ambrosio ambrosia is that how you spell ambrosia like the food ambrosia i don't know um all right so we're gonna get to this uh food plants keep burning down i had another one of these um Okay, yeah. USSA News. I don't know who USSA News is, okay? Um, it's like, you know, you have two different people that are covering this, right? You have people that are like, it's definitely a conspiracy. And uh, everybody's trying to, uh, you know, the, we were told by, you know, the, uh, our, our grand overlords that there was going to be a food shortage coming. Um, and then all of a sudden, a bunch of places, uh, catch on fire. Food processing places catch on fire. What do we think? Is this coincidental? Um, or what is going on here? I, um, I happen to be what some people would call a conspiracy theorist, maybe, which is easy these days. It's very easily it's very easy to be considered a conspiracy theorist in this day and age. I uh I mean when somebody says, "Hey, you're going to have like basically, right, the pandemic." They kept going, "Trump's going to deal with the pandemic. Trump's going to deal with the pandemic." And guess what? It's exactly what happened. So, I think we should learn now that when these uh upper whatever you want to call them, the president, the big wig people 
uh, Klaus Schwab. He apparently is like the vice president of the New World Order or something. I don't know what the hell is going on. Uh, him too. So like when people, those people say this stuff, we just go, yeah, yeah, whatever. But they actually are powerful enough to implement it or they've heard something or whatever. I don't know. I'm just putting this out there. Anyway, so this thing says USSA, which I'm sure it had something about a shirt, an ad for a shirt with a rifle on it, an AR, and they're like, why do I need it? Because it's none of your business. So immediately a lot of you are probably against this site. I don't know what it is. I, can, I'm, I have another site pulled up too, which goes the other way, and I'm sure that it's probably somewhere in the middle of uh, either one of these would be my guess. But it says there has been an abnormal number of fires have occurred at food processing plants in 2022. Okay, see, so Biden announced food shortages are going to be real, blah, blah, blah. So um, food processing plants in San Antonio, Texas, Lackawanna County, Pennsylvania, St. Clair County, Illinois, Salinas, California, El Paso, Texas, and more have exploded into flames in the last several months. While these incidents make the headlines make the headlines in local news, there uh, there are hardly any nationwide story stories you know about it from big outlets, um, which is weird, right? Isn't that weird? That does seem weird. You would think that this would be a fairly big story, right? If all the food places are burning down. Not all of them, okay? This is not a coincidence. 18 U.S. food processing facilities burned to the ground in the last six months. Which, okay, the other article I have pulled up says, like, it's only 15. And, and one of those was in Canada. Like, okay, it still seems weird. Only 15? But that still seems like... So, uh... You know, there's all this stuff, uh, all these fires and their shortages. And meanwhile, Biden blames these shortages on sanctions due to the Ukraine and Russian war. Um, how the hell would that? That doesn't make any sense either. How much food are we getting from Russia? Okay, so here are food storage moms. And I found a couple other articles that basically say the same thing I just um, pick this one, uh, 18 food processing plants burned to the ground, question mark, um, where does it say, somewhere they say that it was only 15, people are questioning on social media why news reporters are not making a deal about all these fires, okay, let's see what's really going on, is it as big as people are making it out, um, where is it, and, See, these fires have been devastating for local communities, disrupting crucial food production and leaving thousands of workers without jobs. While, this, uh, while the cause of these fires is not yet known, many experts believe it's related to, uh, it may be related to issues like poor maintenance and outdated equipment. Um, in January 2021, a fire at a chicken processing plant in Georgia killed five workers and injured dozens more. Then February 2021, fired a meat packing plant. Uh, March 2021, a bacon processing plant. Which is sad that the bacon plant went under. Um, May 21st, a massive, uh, sorry, May 2021, a mass fire broke out at food processing plant in Texas. A few weeks later, uh, so the food processing plant conspiracy. There's a lot of specula speculation to whether or not these food processing plants, plant fires are part of a larger conspiracy. Some believe that the fires are being started intentionally to sa sabotage the food supply chain and create chaos. Others believe there are fires are simply the result of negligence and poor safety standards. Um, currently there is no, I like how they do this, right? Currently there is no evidence 
that there is coordinated attack on America's food supply, according to Snopes. Who listens to Snopes anymore? Snopes is like the... I think Snopes is like two people in a basement uh, just conferring with what they already thought was true. Um... In fact, all of these fires seem to be accidents, mostly from equipment issues. Whether you like Snopes or not, does it really matter? There could be many reasons for these fires. Poor maintenance, poor training, fewer employees, uh, and thus less supervision. So, if you, whether you like Snopes or not, does it really matter? Well, yeah. If I don't believe anything that Snopes said in the past, why now? Am I going to believe them on this? I don't also don't like somebody being the arbiter of truth, right? Like I believe I'm going to trust. I've said this before to people. If you, okay, think about it right now. I want you to pick one person in your life that you know personally to be the dictator to you of what is true and false in the world. Please, one person that you know intimately, very close, uh, you've known them for a long time, great friends, who, maybe not even, I don't care, pick one person in your life that you are going to just feed you all your information, everything, whether it's true or not. Anything happens, you go to this person. He used to be a baker, right? But you got a, a question about now... Um, global warming and your friend that used to be a baker now is the guy that's going to does you see how stupid this sounds and you don't even know who this person is this is somebody you have no idea who they are in a basement somewhere okay maybe they're not in a basement maybe they're on the main floor now you have zero idea who they are at all you're going to go to Snopes and go I agree with this guy's Snopes said why don't you ever go Billy said Jen told me Jen knows everything, okay? She told me this is what it is. Because you don't know anybody personally in real life that you would give that type of trust. You know people... How do you... How is it if people that you know personally, you're like, then know them enough to not trust them. But these other people that you don't know at all, you don't know enough about them to not trust them. So you just go, oh, okay. Sounds good. Just like food storage moms. Um, another, here is another great reference. Focus fact, food, plant, fire, fuels, uh, oh, what is this, a news? They're just got another article they, uh, linked in here. A quote on Monday, the National Fire Protection Association pushed back on the rumors in a story in its magazine titled, Nothing to See Here. Susan McClevy of NFPA spokesperson noted in an email, this is, did any of that make sense? In the email that national data shows the country averaged more than 5,000 fires annually at manufacturing and processing factories, not just food plants, between 2015 and 2019. She estimated that there have been approximately 20 fires in U.S. food processing facilities in the first four months of 2022 which is not extreme at all and does not signal anything out of the ordinary. 20 fires. She estimated there have been approximately 20 fires. And there was 5,000 fires across all, what is that, four years? Five years. So in five years they had 5,000. I guess that's 1,000 fires a year. Look at that. Look at the brains on Brad. Um, But 20 in uh, whatever, four months doesn't seem weird in the same industry. I don't know. Like we'd have to have a whole listed out, you know, like what type of plants typically catch on fire. Right? You know, but the fact that they're like, oh, the national fire guy says, no, it's fine. Again, what the hell does this mean to me? Is he paid off? That could happen. Uh, Is he going by what somebody else told him? Like, 
there, I'm sure there's not just one guy that goes around. And even if there is just one guy that decides all this, that's even worse. Cause then like, it's easier to, it's easier to fudge, right? If you only got one guy to pay off, seems like a much easier, um, okay. So According to a 2019 report from the USDA, the U.S. has 36,000 food and beverage processing plants. Thus, even 18 fires would not cause significant disruption to the food supply. And many of these fires have, uh, that have made various lists, such as 18 food processing plants burned to the ground, have actually happened in 2021. This gives a false impression that more fires have happened in a shorter time. That kind of manipulation happens all the time. Uh, while many tweets go around mentioning 18 fires in six months, only 12 of them actually happened in that time frame. Sorry, I misquoted. I said 15. It's 12. Uh, and one was in Canada. One of the fires did happen in 2022. Uh, whatever. So then what's causing the food shortages then? This is why I brought this up. The main cause of food shortages was COVID-19 pandemic. The virus caused uh, a decrease in production capacity as well as an increase in demand as people were stocking up on food items since they were preparing more meals on their own at home. So let me get this right. More people are cooking at home, which would mean they're eating out less. No, is this not, do I not have this? So then they're still eating the same amount. Those people are still eating, right? Whether they're eating at home or at a restaurant, they're still eating stuff. So I don't think that's a good, uh, that's not a good way to explain it away. They just, they bought more food and cooked more at home. No, they, you, they just would have eaten out and I'm assuming that the food still comes from the same supply chain whether it goes to a restaurant or whether it goes to shop right we didn't lose that many people in the pandemic where now well there's less food you know it doesn't make sense um as well as an increase in demand as people were stockpiling up food items since they were prepping more meals on their own at home Many food processing plants had to close, uh, have had to close due to workers getting sick or having to quarantine. Not now. Now? Still now? Now. In um, June 2022, they're still closed down. When was this closed down because of the pandemic? A year ago? Six months ago? We haven't been able to pick back up on the processing since then. Um, this led to a decrease in production and therefore a shortage of food. The e increase in demand is due to people hoarding food and other household supplies during the pandemic. This has led to empty shelves in many stores across the country. Again, this was how long ago? Why are the shelves still empty? And listen, like I said, I, I don't have an answer here for you. I, if somebody more intelligent than me, which that's an easy one to pull off, wants to uh, just comment in and be like, I'm not reading comments right now. I'll read it later. But uh, please, I mean, tell me why now it's still continuing to be a shortage uh, six, eight months after basically everything opened up. Um, while food processing plant fires are not the cause of the current food shortage, they are a major concern. Wait, while food processing plant fires are not the cause of the current food shortage. Oh, I guess it's just people not going to work. That's right. Um, they are a major concern for the future of food supply. These fires underscore the need for more significant safety regulations at these critical factories and highlights the need adequate emergency planning. 
she doesn't even know what caused the fires. I'm assuming it's she. It's food mom's storage. So this is what was another reason that I thought was hilarious. What can we do to prepare more for food shortages? So this isn't the funny part. Start a garden. I agree with that. We have stuff here. Think about getting chickens. Uh, my girlfriend's been trying to get me to let her get chickens. And I've been against it. But we're getting to a point now where I'm like, I don't know, maybe chickens are not that bad of an idea. I do eat a lot of eggs. And if anything, shit hits a fan, I'll just have to eat one of those chickens. Anyway, um, so this was the other part that I thought was funny. Stock up on non-perishable items. When grocery shopping, always pick an extra can or two of food. So... These are the bitches causing the food shortage. Right here. They're like, it's because people are stocking up because the pandemic. Because you guys are telling them. Support your local farmers. I do agree with this. Um, which is what we do here. Uh, buying food from local farmers helps to support the agriculture uh, industry. And can be a great way to get fresh, healthy food. Check out my, we're not checking out her post, okay? Let's get out of here. Um, but yes, I agree. To, a couple of things. One, why are we getting, I'm in New Jersey, right? Why are my avocados coming from California or Mexico? I mean, I realize you can't grow. Okay, that's a bad one because we can't grow avocados here, okay? Tomatoes, we have great tomatoes. They're seasonal. But guess what? You're going to have to have some shit seasonal. You're not going to have everything all year round. Final word. We don't believe you. Um, yeah. The other thing is, uh, unless you want um, bitch tits Bill Gates to own every farm in the United States and make it all GMO corn so that they can uh, poison us with uh, fr high fructose corn syrup um, and uh, seed oils, then cool. But I like, I think we need uh, farms to go back old way, rotate crops, help the soil, yada yada, not industrialized farming, go back to the way it was done a couple hundred years ago. What? Did I say that? Go back to the way that nature did it. What? That's a stupid idea. We need to manufacture seeds, okay, that have uh, bug repellents in them that'll get into our systems and then cause, never mind. Okay, we're going to go to the next thing. Night of the Jumps, um, Freestyle of Nations, Cologne. It's in Col it was in Cologne, Germany. It smells great there. You know, you get some Cologne and spray it on yourself. Anyway, um, Whole thing, three and a half hours, right here on YouTube. They're also on um, recast.app. So, uh, I don't know. I didn't, I forgot when I went to look. I went to recast.net, and then I realized, I found that that was not a site. Somebody just bought the domain name. That's it. Um, but entire... Uh, Three and a half hour event is up. Steve Sommerfeld, uh, he actually announces the whole friggin' thing. I messaged him. He actually just messaged me back um, while I was on here. He said, hey, mate, how's it going? That's all he said. Thanks. I need to keep half an eye on the tiniest little monitor to see if I'm on the screen because they never tell me. Sneaky bastards. That's true. They do. He's like sitting there talking. He's turned around watching the arena. And then it's just like, then they're just like, he goes, Hey, I'm on the screen again. My bad. Uh, and then they were just like, he didn't get any, it seemed like he didn't get any feeds and like nothing popped up of scores or anything like that. Cause he'll be like, I'm pretty sure uh, team Spain won that round. And then they're like, they just start the next round. And then like, Team Spain rides off of the floor, or I may be um, incorrect with the teams or whatever, but it was funny. It was stuff like that. But I do like, um, it's funny, right? Like TV, and this is across the board. This is not shitting on Night of the Jumps. I think they did a great job. 
um, we'll bring this up. They had, which we're going to talk about next. Anyways, pro motocross, uh, pro motocross had a lot of problems this past weekend with their feed. We'll get to that. So we'll just say this night of the jumps did a really good job. One announcer. Sometimes I, I kind of liked it because it was a little more raw. Um, not every, it wasn't so edited down and, um, Steve gets real deep into, uh, not super deep, but it's not like, so Supercross, and I don't remember the guy's name, but there's a guy on the Supercross broadcast that like, he's a BMX guy, but they're having him announce that stuff, which is a good announcer. But as somebody that's watched Supercross my entire life, and I'm like friggin' balls deep into it. It's slightly annoying to listen to somebody that's not really uh, sure. Uh, and I understand what they're doing. I understand they're trying to make it more um, relatable for people that uh, don't understand the sport. But it, give it up, okay? Cater to the people that are here. Um somebody's not uh, now going into the sport because they're like, oh, this announcer explained whatever, you know, Kawasaki's are green. Uh, I think it's whatever. So, um, Night of the Jumps, their broadcast was good. Um, it's FMX of nations. There was Italy, Spain, Germany. So, like, not all of the nations, which I'm right now in... Europe, you probably have to get your butthole swabbed or something so that you can get in. So I understand, you know, that. And plus, it's, it's just like a show. But it is a fun event. Um, and props to Night of the Jumps, right? Like, what series has run the length of Night of the Jumps? I'm pretty sure they're one of the originals. It was like Red Bull X Fighters, X Games, Night of the Jumps. That was it. And... You know, they've kept up a much larger, uh, more events per year. Their series is larger than anybody else's. Um, just being European, us in the United States don't give a shit, right? We don't care. We don't care. Um, that being said, also, so uh, Massimo Bianconcini, my fellow Italian, although I'm not really from Italy, I was told by which I knew that it's not like they broke the news to me but uh a heckler at a show was very mad I said I was Italian then he asked if I was from Italy and I said no and then he was very upset with me so I'm not actually from Italy Italian I'm just like descendants of Italian so anyway even he said you know uh he's my age maybe a little bit older the other guy on the team was 30 something uh Leo Fini and then uh, the other guy, I guess, is a little bit younger, but he even goes, you know, like after Leo and I quit, who's coming up? And it's like, I've been thinking while watching that whole contest, I was thinking the exact same thing. There's no American team. If they did have an American team, right, they'd have to send people mid thirties. Who is new in America that's doing the tricks those guys are doing? You know, if you look at the sport of freestyle right now, as like America has gone away from big tricks for the most part, right? Step up, uh, quarter pipe high air, um, you know, like I guess quarter pipe best trick, kind of. It's like now brought the tricks. There's not as many years of progression into quarter pipe. And obviously this is a stupid thing to say, but it's not like as easy to, uh, word. The tricks are, are hard. Don't get me wrong. But my point is if you, if they had been riding quarter pipes for, okay, let's just say this in another 10 years, what are they going to be doing on quarter pipes? It's going to get to the same point that it is with regular ramps to where the guys that are really doing the stuff, you know, like the younger people. Uh, Luke Ackerman, um, he's the younger people. Like, who else is young that's, oh, that Kai, um, another German guy, who actually raced, um, Anaheim 1, made it into the night show, 
uh, I guess didn't make the main, but still the guy's a full-time freestyle rider. You guys see the dude jumps up onto the platform, does an endo off the, that's him. He's a full-time freestyle guy, can do all these tricks. Went and qualified for the night program of Supercross. What? Which is its own whole job. <laughs> like That's a whole genre that people practice their whole life and never make it into a Supercross main. And this guy goes over and does that. Apparently also does hard enduro, all kinds of shit. Like he's just a super talented person, I feel like. Kind of got uh, sidetracked. Anyway, right now in the United States, young guys putting in work are um, Axel Hodges, or at least putting, like, ma making a name. Axel Hodges, and uh, why can't Colby Raha, and their buddy uh, Cole. None of them, in mad respect to all those guys, um, but nobody's, like, nobody's pushing trick-wise, like, just big trick-wise, uh, and, like, everybody here is just more free rider, whip type of guy, I guess, because we're cool, because we're in the United States, we're like, we're not going to do double flips or whatever, we're going to do cool, you know, like, styly whips or whatever, which is awesome, I wish I had style, I have terrible style, that's why. It never worked out. Um, but, uh, like, and Axel and Colby have their own things, but they're not, like I said, working on new body burials. They're not working on, I mean, maybe they're working on double flips. I don't know. But ne neither one of them are doing, like, you know, even heart attack flips or KOD flips. Or I mean, I realize Axel's friggin' flipping into manual, which is insane. Uh, but again, that's like stepping out of the lane and to the side and then kind of like finding your own little thing, which is totally fine. I'm not talking shit on that. That's fine. My point is that who in America is going to be the next, that kid is that kid, the Red Bull kid that was at, um, imagination that on the 80, that hooked those big ass jumps, like. I guess that's the only kid. I don't even know what his name is. Uh, who else is that age that's doing that stuff? And I mean, he's jumping stuff. But again, I haven't seen videos popping up of him just learning tricks out of this world. You know, so um, I think freestyle is in a weird spot right now where what's going to happen in the next uh, five to ten years. Most of the people still riding, I rode with to some extent. Or I was at least riding like mid-career when they started so uh fmx is weird it's it's just same people for a long time we're gonna go to motocross which ironically uh so massimo bianconcini the my fellow italian guy we're both Italian. he came out of retirement from five after five years guess who else did that ryan dungy this past uh this past weekend, Ryan Dungey came out. He was also gone five years. Let's go to um, the results. I guess we're skipping right to 450. Okay. Ryan Dungey gets 5-5. Five, five. Two fifth places. That's intense. He hasn't figured if no gate drops. Um, and you can train all you want, but the... Once you get into a race, the intensity in the race is, it's not, it's never the same. It's always way higher. You can't practice at the same level you're going to race at. It's almost impossible. Um, I know a lot of people now, they ride in big groups and stuff, so that helps. But still, it's not, you know that you can just let them go today and it doesn't mean anything. Um, Honda swept the day. Chase Sexton got first. Ken Roxon got second. And they were gone. They left everybody. Pretty much both motos. Christian Craig, 3-3. Three, three. Should have been on a 450 a long time ago. Um, Eli Tomac, he's still, he looks like he's had 7-4, which he has off motos, but uh, this year he hasn't so far. <laughs> Jesus. He hasn't so far this year, so um, I expected the dogs to be way louder than that. Uh, so anyway, in Supercross, Tomac didn't have the off days like he did before, so I'm assuming it's his knee. Um being an issue. 
Jason Anderson, 4.8. I think he crashed in both motos, so that's not really indicative of his uh, of his speed. He was way faster than that. And uh, Antonio Caroli, another person I want to talk to or talk about. I'd love, sure, I'd love to talk to Antonio Caroli. He goes 10-6. Allegedly has only been riding motos for the past month which obviously he's not like 200 pounds, so he didn't get that fat over the year. But a month of motos and he gets, and he goes 10-6. Is there some part of Antonio's brain that's going like, I should have come over here a couple of years ago when I was just full of balls to the wall, training hard, and I could be an American motocross champion. I think a small part of his brain should be saying that um because that's a you know like over in europe that's all they ride is outdoors so all these people here you know these guys here are screwing around for half the year uh doing supercross you know so um i think he probably could have came over here and ate everybody's lunch for him all right let's go 250 overall once again like what is this? Is this last year? Jeremy Martin? What is this from? Um, what the hell is going on? I don't understand what's going on. Okay. Hopefully this is the correct. There we go. I was like, Jeremy Martin, I don't even think he's riding right now. Um, but same winner, Jet Lawrence. Um, he went 1-1, his brother went 2-2, and again, I think they had a pretty significant lead over everybody else. Um, Joe Schmoda, consistent, 4-3. RJ Hampshire, unfortunately, par for the course, 3-9. Um, and then Michael Moseman, also par for the co- course, 9-4. Both of those guys, blistering fast, and then... The wheels come off at some point. Like, I can't tell you how many times uh, Mosman or RJ have had a lead and then just blown it. Austin Forkner gets six with 6-6. Six, six, and then guess what? Something happened to his shoulder and he's out again. He's getting shoulder surgery. Did it happen in practice? I obviously didn't just... I obviously just read the title of the article that said it. I don't know. But that's a bummer for Austin. Um, I'm not like huge, I'm not wearing Austin Forkner t-shirts at, around, but still like you don't want to see a dude just never get a chance. You know, like he just constantly has something happen. Seth Hamaker, 8-5, he was doing good. He's only same thing, came up, got hurt, only did a couple of uh, races, uh, pro outdoor races so far. And Levi Kitchen, he was like the amateur hot shoe, 5-8. Pierce Brown, 7'7". Seven, seven. Styles Robert. Max Voland, 12'10", which seems like he should be able to... Jesus! Justin Cooper got friggin' 11'13", and he was leading. But again, I think he's somebody that would spin hurt. Um, so I, I think, you know, probably just fitness. Um, all right, here I got a... Here's something else that I want to... Oh, let me pull my graphic up. Hold on. We're going... Here we go. Oh, no, I got rid of that. I got rid of myself now. Irritable bowel syndrome. Which any time... We were just having this conversation, which is why I decided to discuss this. Everything can't shouldn't be diagnosed. You don't need a diagnosis for everything, okay? I would say irritable bowel syndrome is one of those things. Let's get into it. Hold on. Irritable bowel syndrome. First off, syndromes are weird, okay? Overview. Irritable bowel syndrome, IBS, is a common disorder that affects the large intestine. Signs and symptoms include cramping, abdominal pain, bloating, gas, and diarrhea or constipation, or both. IBS is a chronic condition 
that you'll have to manage long term. Only a small number of people with IBS have severe signs or symptoms. Some people can't control their symptoms by managing diet, lifestyle, and stress. More severe symptoms can be treated with medication and counseling. Here's the thing. When you go into the doctor, and I realize it does say uh, managing diet, lifestyle, and stress. That's not, a sim- that's not a syndrome then. If you can manage it with food, that would tell me that Maybe food's causing it. So do you have an irritable bowel syndrome or do you have a continue to eat the same bullshit syndrome? Let's look at the Manhattan gastro, gastronology, gastroenterology. Who makes these words up? Gastroenterology. All right. 10 worst foods for digestive health. While an unhealthy diet may cause nothing more than a few uncomfortable hours, while an unhealthy diet may cause nothing more than a few uncomfortable hours, eating the wrong foods over a long time can lead to more severe complications. No shit. So then to say that while eating an unhealthy diet, see, diet is just what you eat all the time. So they should just say while eating an unhealthy meal can cause nothing more than a few uncomfortable hours, right? Because if it's your diet, you're just eating that all the time, always, which is where I'm getting at here with this. Uh, The wrong foods over a long period of time can lead to more severe complications as a primer on foods to avoid, or at least reduced, listed below, are the 10 worst foods for digestive health. Greece. Fried food is at the top of the gastroenterologist worst food list because it's difficult to digest you if you have the slightest di, uh, slightest digestive sensitivity. Fried food can kick off a bout of heartburn and acid reflux. Okay. Uh, so something about digestive sensitivity, which sounds like a better... Uh, diagnosis than irritable bowel syndrome. You just have sensitive bowels and you keep stuffing shit in them. Uh, processed food, the, the carbohydrates and refined foods like chips, soda, and white bread move through your digestive system quickly, leading to symptoms like bloating, cramping, and gas. Wait, I think those are some of the symptoms of irritable bowel syndrome. Uh, oh, I just, what happened there? Three, chili peppers. You have to stop listening to the chili peppers, okay? They are fucking up your bowels. You might enjoy the sweat, uh, the sweat they stir up, but spicy peppers can cause heartburns for hours after you eat them. Hot spicy foods are particularly dangerous, uh, for your digestive system when you eat them close to bedtime or late. Wait, so eating this stuff is... Messing with your digestive system? Is that what you're saying? Is that what you're saying? Chocolate. Yes. Uh, The sweet tooth, that sweet tooth you indulge in is affecting more than the size of your thighs. Trigger can, uh, chocolate can trigger digestive symptoms like heartburn and an upset stomach. Especially if you have a disorder. And uh, for some people, it can cause diarrhea and loose stools, which is also a sign of irritable bowel syndrome. Artificial sweeteners. While you think you're doing your body a favor by shaving calories off your intake, your digestive system suffers when you substitute artificial sweeteners for natural sugar. The pink and yellow and blue packets contain ingredients that can cause bloating, diarrhea, and gas, which again... You got it, are the signs of irritable bowel syndrome. Alcohol is not technically a food unless you consider the three martini lunch. Even drinking alcohol in moderation can relax the sphincter in your esophagus, causing heartburn or acid reflux. Too much alcohol can 
can inflame your stomach lining, negatively affect your liver and lead to diarrhea. It can also prevent you from absorbing nutrients properly. Corn. Too much of anything is bad for digestion, but corn in large amounts can lead to significant gastrointestinal system, uh, symptoms because of its high cellulose content. content. The human digestive tract cannot break down cellulose. Do you hear that? The human digestive tract cannot break down. Corn passes through your system undigested. As such, it can cause cramps, abdominal pain, and gas in the process, which are all signs of what? Irritable bowel syndrome. Do you see where I'm getting at here? Coffee. Again, while it's not the food, coffee deserves a spot in this list. Coffee so irritates the stomach lining that it uh, nearly 40 million Americans have ki kicked the habit. Coffee can cause heartburn, acid reflux, and bowel habit. Bowel habit? What the hell does that mean? What is a bowel habit? Did that, is that a typo? Do I know? Among other things, different foods affect people differently. Thank you. Acidic fruits. Just the name alone conjures up visions of acid reflux. And for good reason. Oranges, grapefruits, tomatoes, and lemons are high in acid. Over uh, eating acidic fruit leads to a condition that carries its name. Eating these fruits on an empty stomach irritates your stomach lining uh, even more. I'm going to say if fruits bother your stomach that much, you've been eating the wrong shit for a long time and your stomach's screwed up. Raw vegetables. Even though you may know about uh, the many healthy benefits of crunching raw veggies, which also remains to be seen, you can expect to pay an intestinal price for overindulging in practice. Uh, raw vegetables contain a lot of insoluble fire that, like corn, can cause bloating, gas, diarrhea, and cramps when they pass through your system undigested, which are all signs of, you got it, irritable bowel syndrome. Use caution when trying new food if you have a diagnosed digestive condition. Pay attention to what you eat. See, they say that backwards. If you have a di uh, diagnosed digestive condition, pay attention to what you eat. How about it's like, pay attention to what you eat so that you don't have a diagnosed digestive condition. Uh, sufferers of GERD, colitis, irritable bowel syndrome, or celiac disease, for example, already know to avoid fried and fatty foods. Book an appointment with your doctor if your system's symptoms last longer than a day. Basically, if your systems last a day, that means whatever you ate that day irritated your bowels. If they last longer than that, that means you continually eat stuff that irritates your... Do I need to continue or do you guys get where I'm, get, get where I'm going? Getting a proper diagnosis is the first step to making healthier choices in the future. Really. Again, this is how our health system works, right? You need to go in and be diagnosed with something to then be like, oh shit, I should take care of myself. Right? I mean, that's what they do. And guess what? When you go in and you, to your gastrointestinologist's friggin' place and they diagnose you with something... Guess what? They don't have any nutritional uh, knowledge. Very little. Very little. So what are they going to do? Give you a pill. So you're going to go, they're going to go, listen, you have IBS, which means uh, it's irritable bullshit. It's everything. You constantly eat stuff that irritates your gut and your intestines. This is just your syndrome is that you constantly eat stuff that screws you up. So what are we going to do? Give you a pill. We're not going to address the things that you eat that screw you up. We're going to give you a pill and then you can continue to eat shit. That seems, I mean, that's, it was, that's obviously the best way to go. I would say. 
Uh, book your appointment with your doctor if your system symptoms last longer today. Getting a proper diagnosis is the first step to making healthier choices in the future. Contact NYC gastroenterologist to schedule an appointment. See one of our gastroenterologists uh, or more information. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah. You don't have irritable bowel syndrome. You continually eat shit. That has been my PSA for today. Um, that's it. I've been a little bit more consistent. But I'm going to be back at least once a week. I'm trying for twice. Um, oh yeah. Mav TV sucked a huge wang this past weekend. I bought the thing and then it sucked. And this is where I'm getting at. With the streams. I mean, look at my stream. Look how good my stream is. I'm realizing TV, this is what I was starting to say before. Last thing. TV, right, is all super cut, edited, blah, blah, blah. As soon as, this is like everything, right? The internet. As soon as they're like, hey, you can buy this equipment, stream at home. Everybody did that. And then most broadcasts went to shit. The last couple of years I've been watching Supercross and I'm just like, they're having issues just like my live stream. I'm like, I don't need, I feel much better about myself because they can't get together either. So live streaming has made more stuff available, but it has also brought the quality down, which is also just like everything else, right? Everything used to be um, prim and proper and then YouTube started and then it's just dudes with shit cameras recording uh, their cousin going through a puddle on their uh, quad wheeler. That's it. It's all digressed. Okay, that's it. It was only supposed to be half an hour, but I obviously cannot talk for less than 50 minutes. At least 45. Alright, peeps. Um, Danellen-theater.com or livestreamcomedy.com uh, for all the stuff at the Danellen Theater. Also, you can go to the page um, facebook.com slash Danellen Theater and uh, we have check out our events I have everything listed there I also have all the ticket links in the events so check it out 100 years I haven't worked there the whole time I didn't start uh, I only started like beginning of the year I haven't been there the whole year okay um, yeah that's it later go ahead comment tell me I'm an idiot or whatever 